I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Question on Twitter came in from Silver Horse Media. Rick, hi, I checked out your channel. Have you ever done an Inkscape tutorial on creating an Aurora Borealis in the night sky? I haven't yet, but this isn't the first time I've had the request about 10 months ago from Mike Daubert, awesome video. I was wondering if it'd be possible to create an Aurora Borealis in the night sky. And a year ago from Ooh Candy Ooh, would you be able to show us how to use something like this to draw an Aurora Borealis? So I guess it's pretty popular. Yes, this is one of my favorite things about Inkscape. You can do very complicated things easily. We're gonna use the live path effect called Stitch Subpaths. Well, what does that even mean? Let's start by going over the absolute basics first. So I'm gonna make a white line. I'll do Control D to duplicate it. I'll move it over so I have two paths. These are our main paths. If I hold Shift, I can collect both of them. And to do the live path effect properly, we have to first combine them. So go to Path, Combine. Now this is all one path. If you look down in the information area, it says what I have selected here is a path with four nodes. If you hit edit paths by nodes, you can see the four nodes, one, two, three, four. All right, so we go to path, path effects, and you'll see a sidebar menu pop up with nothing. You wanna go down to the plus, and this will bring up the live path effects menu. You can type in stitch subpaths up here, or you can look around for it down here. If I click on this carrot, it says stitch subpaths, draw perpendicular lines between subpaths of a path like rungs of a ladder, which is helpful, but if you've never tried it, you need to see it in action. Let's just do it. So I'll click on stitch subpaths, and here are the rungs of a ladder, and our original paths have disappeared. And that's okay. So if you look on the menu here, number of paths, five. One, two, three, four, five. Don't worry about the rest for now. Let's change it to 25, enter. Well, what can you do with that? For starters, if I go to edit paths by node, and I grab one of the nodes, you can see how they are stitched together. And you can make some pretty interesting designs right off the bat. Let's turn this to the side. We'll get more into the fine details on the Aurora Borealis, but let me just show you here. This is the same icon as the Edit Paths by Node. You see the pop-up here, it says Edit on Canvas. So I'll click on that. And again, you might go, well, what's going on? I don't see any nodes to edit. For some reason, they always keep those nodes up on the page somewhere. So here they are for me over here. All I did was select them so I can bring them closer to the work that I'm doing. If it's your first time ever playing with it, they're gonna be right up here on the corner of the page. And again, I'm showing you the simple basics because it's not super intuitive. If you saw these two nodes, what would you do with them? I don't know, but I'll show you. You wanna drag one of them out. You can see it's moving your design. Since I rotated the design, I wanna rotate my line. And watch what this edit on canvas green line lets you do. If I grab the center of it, I can warp everything together. And I make this vector bird kind of flap its wings, which I think is cool. All right, enough messing around with the example. Let's actually do the Aurora Borealis. This is the default page. If you go to File, Document Properties, you can change it. We're on the A4 template, which is fine, but I'll do an orientation landscape direction. And on the page, I'll click here. Let's change the page border to black. I'm gonna cheat a bit with the color palette, which I'll have all the color codes in the description below. I'll go to my Bezier pen, and up in mode, let's change it to the second one, create spiral path, and we'll make a nice gentle arcing line. This is one of our main paths. Let's change this to this teal. For simplicity, I'll do control D to duplicate it. I'll move this one up, shrink it down a little bit, maybe turn it. The bottom one is selected, hold shift to get the top one, path, combine. Now we can apply the live path effects. Back to path, path effects. Here is the path effects menu, plus stitch subpaths. And there we go, there's the five default, one, two, three, four, five. And now we can get into the details. First, let's make this 250. And there is the very analog Northern Lights. For start edge variance, check out what happens if we just change that to 1.0. You see that start edge now has some variety to it. That might be too intense. Maybe we'll do 0.5, that's better. Start spacing variance, I'll go with 10 a little bit more organic, end edge variance. When I did my research looking at actual reference photos of the Northern Lights, the top edge does look like a flame fading out, but the bottom edge is pretty solid. So we'll do the end edge variance, something small, 0.25, just enough to break it up, maybe 0.20. And the last one, end spacing variance, just play around with this. Try five, separate some a bit, maybe 10, 25. 
we can come back and modify once we have it in the actual Aurora Borealis form. And let's do it. So stitch sub paths, edit on canvas, hit that. This time the actual bar came right where we want it in the middle. Sometimes it's up here. Inkscape has a way of keeping us on our toes. Take the right side and bend it down. Now I have more of the flame facing a little bit more vertically. Let's bend it. There we go, so it warps. That's enough for now. We'll edit on the fly once it's more blurred. If you go to the fill and stroke menu where you might already know there's a blur slider, you can do that, but that blur is just everything evenly. And that's not what we want. We wanna go up to filters, blurs, hit this actual blur choice and you get a mini pop-up box. I want it to blur vertically. I want this stuff to kind of bleed upward. 5.0 is probably where we wanna end up. Let's just start with a 1.5 and hit live preview. You see how it kept some of the integrity? It didn't horizontally blur, it's just the vertical blur. We'll try 3.5, maybe 3.5 does it today. Horizontal blur, we can add a touch more. I'm at 0 0.01, let's do 0 0.05. If it doesn't render in real time, deselect live preview, then reselect it. This down here is what I'm going for. We'll do apply for now and we can play with it some more. Close. On my sidebar, I'll go back to my path effects, hit the edit on canvas button, and now we can see, there we go. You can really move it around and see your Northern Lights start to come alive. That's it right there. See that striation? Let's start playing with the colors now. Go back to your fill and stroke menu. I'm on stroke, but I wanna go over to the linear gradient. This bar, if you don't see it and you only have this slider up here, you wanna hit this tool, which is called create and edit gradients. That will bring the bar up. The old way was just this bar. Now you have this nice slider. So I'm on this node here, which correlates to the circle. I'll change the alpha to full, see that? <laughs> I mean, maybe you do want to keep it partially transparent. Let's go full opacity for now, get the colors right, then we can play with the transparency. I'll take this side and bring it down here. We'll hit the eyedropper here. I'm affecting this beginning of the gradient and we'll go with green. Someone can fact check me, but I think all of this natural phenomenon is from the way light is refracting through the atmosphere. For some reason, it's green at the bottom. It also has some blues at the top. I like what we have here. So we're going from green to teal. We'll stay with that. You can keep going and go back to the stitch subpaths, but I'll show you a way to cheat with this one run of the Aurora Borealis. I'll do control. Control D to duplicate, and I will make this one smaller because I want to add a little bit more brightness down here. You might be tempted to go back to the stitch subpaths and play with it again, but sometimes that messes up the original, but there are other ways you can manipulate it. If you double click and see your handles here, the top arrow, you could shift it, same with the side arrows. I'm trying to get a brighter green here. That's looking okay. Let's go back to blur, filters, blur. This blur effect is tied to both, but that's okay because I might want to add to it. I thought we'd be at a five at the end. Let's hit live preview. Yeah, that's better. This 3.5 might have us at an actual seven, but I like that. I want it to be kind of blurred out, but still see some striations. So I'll hit apply. Let's use this. I'll do control G to group it, and I'm gonna cheat. Let me bring in a background for you. This is the backdrop I made mostly for the thumbnail, so I had something to put the Aurora Borealis in. The star field is made with the spray can tool, and this is a mountain. I also did the spray can for the contours, and I've got it dropped in behind it. Let's go up one on the hierarchy, and there it is. And that's it. That's how you can use Stitch Subpaths, a very technical piece of vector software to do something seemingly supernatural. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions for other videos, put them in the comments, and I'll see you next time.